Why in heaven's name can't some people stay retired? Hi, this is Phil Gursky, President and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting in Russell, Ontario, and you're listening to Quick Hits. It's been almost six years now since I left the Canadian Public Service. It was the end of April in 2015 when I decided to uh, take my retirement uh, from uh, active work. Although I did only have two real weeks of vacation after my departure from the federal government to take up a position with the Ontario Provincial Police's anti-terrorism section, known as OPP PATS, as a terrorism advisor to law enforcement. So it's almost been six years since I uh, no longer went to work on a daily basis, at least didn't uh, commute to work on a daily basis. Although that word commute is a hard one to use nowadays during COVID when everyone seems to be working from home anyway. But the point is, is that I have uh, been on a pension uh, since uh, April of 2015. If you've been following me over the past couple of years, you will know, however, that the term retirement uh, is something that doesn't quite apply to uh, where I am and who I am in my, in my life's journey. In fact, my children, and I, and I do have three, three kids, uh, tell me regularly, uh, Dad, we, we love you very much, but you clearly suck at retirement. And I think they have a point. I don't feel retired beyond the fact that I don't go have a day job to which I go. I feel I'm pretty busy. I feel pretty fulfilled. Uh, I, I like what I'm doing. I like keeping up on the news. I like commenting on it. I like sharing views with people. I like getting people's feedback. I like getting into discussions and debates. If they're polite uh, is my minimum requirement. What I want to share with you today are really three reasons why I keep doing what I'm doing. I'm sure there are more, but these are three reasons that I've thought of. And the genesis for this particular podcast came out of some feedback I got recently from some of the people who follow me either on Twitter or subscribe to the podcast. By the way, feel free to subscribe, go to the website borealisthreatenrisk.com, give me your email address, and you'll get a daily update on all our material. The first reason why I do what I do, it has to do with the audience. Actually, all three reasons have to do with the audience that I'm trying to reach. The first bit of feedback I got was actually from a, a serving RCMP officer, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who regularly emails me and, and texts me to say, uh, you know, keep keep doing what you're doing. In other words, my first audience and the one that I think is the most important one, the one that I cherish the most, the one that, is, that means the most to me is the practitioner audience. And by practitioners, I mean those that work in law enforcement, those that work in security intelligence. In other words, those that do today what I used to do during my 32 year career in the public service. People that work at the coalface, people that are carrying out investigations, people that are doing analysis based on intelligence and our information that's gained in the course of criminal or intelligence investigations, people that we pay and that we hope are standing on guard for us as Canadians or outside of Canada. I get feedback from law enforcement around the world that we, we want them to, to keep us safe. They want, we want them to detect bad guys before they act. We want them to carry out investigations, to run human sources, to do surveillance, to get intercept warrants, to keep tabs on these people before something goes bad. We want them to prevent acts of violent extremism, not clean up afterwards when they've taken place. My heart goes out to every single man and woman who works in law enforcement and security intelligence. I have the deepest respect for them. And if what I'm doing today with my podcasts and my blogs is helping at all uh, them to do their jobs in a better way, then I'm a very, very, very happy Canadian. As I said, I have fans around the world who like my stuff, who work in this business. Please keep doing what you're doing for us, and please feel free to reach out if there's anything that I could possibly do to make your job any easier. The second audience that I get a lot of feedback from are people who want to join security intelligence or law enforcement. I get emails several times a week from young men and women who write to me and say, hey, listen to your podcast. I'd like to become a intelligence officer, or I'd like to become a law enforcement officer, or I want to become an analyst in the national security system. Do you have any advice for me? And I take the time to talk to them. I often say, give me a call or we'll have a Skype call or a Zoom call, whatever. Take a look at their backgrounds, look at the courses they're taking, look at their experiences, and try to give them whatever advice I can 
on how to achieve their goals. I'm under no illusions. I have all the answers. I constantly remind myself that I'm now almost six years out of the business and almost eight years out of the investigative business. Things may have changed. Priorities may have, have altered. What they're looking for may be completely different. I doubt it, but I'm more than happy to provide whatever help I can for young people who want to walk in the same footsteps that I did. In other words, if, if I can help people, talented, bright, good Canadians or other nationalities join their security intelligence communities or law enforcement to make a positive difference, then I will move heaven and earth to do so. I'm actually quite touched that young people think I have something to offer to them. I'm very, very insistent that we get the best and the brightest to work in our national security and intelligence communities. So for those of you out here who listen to me, who are in that boat, never hesitate to contact me. Send me an email, message me on Twitter, reach out to me on LinkedIn, whatever. I'd love to talk to you and help you achieve the goals that you, you have set for yourself in life. The third audience is basically the general public. A lot of what I do is, is looked at by average Canadians, average citizens around the world, not all of whom are necessarily involved in security intelligence or in terrorism or violent extremism, but find the material of interest. I am so pleased that I can provide even a little bit of insight and a little bit of analysis when it comes to violent extremism, terrorism, and general security intelligence issues. If I can help contribute to a general education of the public when it comes to these matters, using the perspective that I have, i.e. having worked in security intelligence for more than three decades, then I can go to bed a very satisfied individual at night. There are a lot of voices out there, a lot of disparate voices of varying quality, it must be, it must be admitted. Some are very, very good, and I, I, I too follow them, and I read their material, and I learn from it. Some of them are absolutely atrocious, but that's the nature of social media. It's a free-for-all platform. You get the good, the bad, and the ugly in there. And if I can be part of that to help give some kind of insight or a different way of looking at things to the average Canadian, then again, I am a very, very lucky and a very happy individual. I don't do this for kudos. I don't do this to become part of the academic debate. I am not an academic and I don't have any intention of becoming one, although I have thought about it off and on for the past five years. I don't do it to get positions in government. I do this because I like, to, I like it. I think I have things to offer. I hope I have things to offer based on the ex feedback I'm getting. I guess the answer is yes. And my promise to those of you who follow me on various platforms is I'm going to keep doing this for the immediate future. As I've said on many, many occasions to people, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. And when I stop having fun, that's when I stop doing it. So for those of you who've taken the time to get back to me with your feedback, especially those in law enforcement, security intelligence, and young people, and average Canadians and citizens, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your feedback means a lot to me, good, bad, or indifferent. When I make mistakes, I fully appreciate being, being called out on it. When you disagree with my analysis, I fully appreciate you taking issue with me, as long as you do so in a polite Canadian fashion. I'm more than happy to engage with you. Anyhow, that's what I think. Just to remind you that these podcasts are sponsored. This podcast is sponsored by the Manitoba Moose, which is a hockey team in the American Hockey League out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. And as usual, we're going to end these Quick Hits podcasts with the Hardy Boys Guides to Life. This is the wisdom that is given to us by Frank and Joe Hardy. This one comes from The Disappearing Floor. Another great title for a Hardy Boys novel. A smart detective never takes anything for granted. For those of you doing analysis or commentary on all things violent extremism and terrorism and security intelligence, do me a favor. Never take anything for granted. Do your homework. Look at your facts. Corroborate your facts. And then weigh in with your opinion. That's thanks to the Hardy Boys again. Anyhow, that's what I think. I'd love to hear your feedback on what I'm doing. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you wish I went in a different direction? You can reach me on email, borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at borealisafes. You can also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If you like this content as mentioned earlier, please go to my website, borealisthreatenedrisk.com, hit the subscribe button, provide your email address, and you'll get all this material sent to you automatically on a daily basis. Love to hear your feedback on this and other items. I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, 
stay safe.